This channel grew from absolutely zero to 100,000 subscribers in less than four months. And in this video, I'm gonna explain the five ways how that was possible, the three things I learned during that process about creating videos and maybe what I would do differently. So if you're a YouTube creator or wanting to be one or just generally interested in this video, you will learn some ways to grow a YouTube channel, also maybe what not to do and learn more about my journey on growing from zero to 100,000. My name is Taro. I am a Finnish mushroom entrepreneur. I've created a few businesses around mushrooms. I've written a few books about mushrooms. I'm originally from Finland, now live in Austin, Texas with my family. I have three kids. And uh, yeah, this is the spore. Here I share ideas and learnings and mistakes that I've made along the journey about business, parenting, and life in general. And hopefully you enjoy the content. And in this specific video, we're gonna talk about my YouTube journey that started in December 26, 2023. And in April, in under four months, we hit our 100,000 subscriber mark which is awesome, yay, thank you for following. And if you haven't subscribed, by the way, you can subscribe now, most of you haven't watching these videos. In this video, I'm just gonna dive deeper into the ways how the channel grew so quickly, what I learned from that process, pros and cons, and what I would do differently, and maybe some tips for you as well. I started this channel as a way to do something new and different for me, how to have fun. I also wanted to share some of the lessons I've learned along the way and the mistakes I've created so you don't have to create those mistakes again. And before I started YouTube, I considered also doing a podcast. I have a whole nother video on why I chose YouTube over podcast. You can check it out if you want. But as part of that story, people said YouTube is great. Like YouTube is great for discoverability. YouTube is great for reach, video is the future, this and that. But the one thing everybody warned me about is that, hey, the first one to three years will be really tough. I was mentally prepared to just get like a thousand subscribers in the first 12 months. My goal is 10,000 that hit in like a month. Um, but I was like mentally prepared to do it really, go down the hard way and it taking a while to gain traction. That was not the case, but I was mentally prepared for that. At the same time, I listened to a lot of the best YouTube personalities share their learnings, because they obviously know way more than I do, a million times more. So people like Mr. Beast Jimmy sharing that if he could get a new channel without using his other channels or his fame or knowledge or money, he could create a new channel and hit a million subs very quickly just because he's like good at it. And that, that I learned that so much of the success of the channel is how good you actually are and how good of content you can actually create for this specific forum. And that made me think it's possible to grow, but I was mentally prepared to grow very slowly in the beginning. And that didn't happen. And I credit the following five things as the ways how that was possible. Now, before anybody comments below about it, um, I had some advantages and disadvantages, like probably you as well, or any creator. My disadvantages was that I didn't really have a social media presence. I had a private Instagram for a long time. I do have a lot of friends, uh, so that's an advantage. I have about 17,000 followers or just under on Instagram. I have like a few hundred on LinkedIn. I don't have Facebook. So I didn't have a big social media presence to leverage, but I do have one of my companies, Four Sigmatic, does have like resources I could leverage on help on growing the channel that surely helped me. I also knew a lot of people I could interview and grow the channel, bring in famous guests. I chose not to do that, but that was like a, a thing I had. And I'm also like about to turn 40. So I have a lot of life experience. Not all that life experience is good, but I've like, I was maybe more ready to talk about certain things and also uh, ready to handle the growth that maybe some people wouldn't be. So now to the five things that really I credit a lot of the growth. First of all was hustle. The first thousand and maybe the first 10,000 are by far the hardest. Once you hit 10,000, it went from 10,000 to 100,000 fairly quickly. But if you're a YouTube viewer and you see somebody having 500 subs, it's harder for you to probably follow or hit subscribe. But if you have 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 million, you're just like, oh, many people enjoy this channel, let me subscribe to it. So hitting the first thousand or 10,000 was the hardest. Now it happened fairly quickly for me, but I did it with a lot of like 
boots on the ground, hard work. So I DM'd a lot of my friends, like follow me. I told everyone in my close social circle to follow me. Uh, I posted it on Instagram. I have actually not used my Instagram since, but in the first few weeks, I posted it multiple times. I posted shorts of those videos. Um, I messaged people on, on LinkedIn, yada, yada, yada. You get the point. But the first like a thousand or more was a lot of sweat equity. Again, my luck was that I knew a lot of people and I had a network to get to that thousand. But I bet if you go down your neighborhood or community, you can get a few hundred subs. And getting to that first thousand, ten thousand is so critical. And there's really no shortcut. It's unlikely that YouTube will recommend you broadly to a large audience <laughs> until you're doing really well. So in order to get the ball rolling, it's a lot of hard work. So that's something I did. It doesn't cost anything, it takes time, a lot of effort. Um, and people will not follow you even if you reach out to them. So it takes a little bit of a, like a top for skin, which helps when you're a little bit older and you see in life. So if somebody says no, it's not the end of the world. Second thing I did is I interviewed a lot of experts in YouTube uh, before I even started. Um, some of them are just public knowledge. Like I mentioned, Mr. Beast, there's a lot of podcasts and videos about how to create YouTube channels. Um, you can find them yourself, but there's tons of great creators. Um, that you can learn from. I also know people behind the scenes that have grown huge channels, many millions of subscribers, and I talked to them. Some of them actually wanted to work with me and help me if I pay them a lot of money, and I didn't wanna do that. Mostly not because of the money part, but because like I wanted this to be fun. And if I'm not like willing to make mistakes, I'll get back to that in a second, I felt like it would not be fun if it's too scripted or too polished. But what I did do is I did ask all those folks is like, hey, what's the 80-20? And I think that's the big lesson here. It's what's the 80-20 of YouTube? Like, what are the few things to keep in mind? Not that it's they will solve for that problem, but just for me to know what matters. And what I learned as being like the top three things is the thumbnail, the title, and the topic. Even before shooting a video, I think a lot about the thumbnail and the title and the topic. And with the topic, starting in reversed order, is that internet, every information is at your fingertips. So you can watch any content. So if it's content that's not like niche and narrow and specific to someone's problems, like why would they watch it? Maybe if you're a big celebrity or now Mr. Beast, they can create a video about anything and people are like, oh, that's interesting. But if you're a new content creator, you have to have some sort of a niche. So I did think about a lot of content, like what's not out there, that's not still something that's meaningful to me, and something I've learned along the ways. And looking at those like niche topics that I have particular knowledge, like Finnish culture, my best and most successful video today is a video about like, why is Finland the happiest country in the world? And I was born in Finland, I grew up there, I spent 20 years of my life and then lived in nine other countries. So I had some context of like, why could it be? So creating videos that don't yet exist or they, ex or you create a new angle of a video that people could benefit from, it was really important. The titles do need to be a little bit edgy. Like if, if the title is not edgy, you're like Finland or like Finnish happiness, people don't click on it. And you can't lie and create a video that's not about, but like the title of that video was the, the bizarre reason why Finland is the happiest country in the world. The, or the bizarre reason makes you think like, oh, what is the bizarre reason? It has a lot to do with, by the way, um, pagan traditions and whatnot, if you're curious, but you can watch the video online later. But it's important to have like an interest area and the thumbnail needs to be kind of like stand out. Um, again, you can fabricate and lie and clickbait, but it needs to be interesting enough for people to click on it for new viewers. And again, I'll get back to later on things I learned about good thumbnails, bad thumbnails, not all of ours have been great, but I knew that those were the important things and having that expert help and learning from the top people in YouTube helped me to spend more of my effort there. So maybe my learning curve was faster than with others. Third thing I did is that I hired a videographer and editor. Alex was behind the camera. But the, the lesson is the team. Most content creators start without a team. So they shoot and edit themselves, which is totally okay. But the learning curve and the speed is a little bit slower because you have to spend time. So in a way you're like, you're paying for something. In my case, I have businesses and kids and, and this is not my number one priority, not even my two, three or four priority. It's like my number fifth priority 
So I'm trading off like money for time and I'm lucky enough to be in that position that I can do that. You might not be in that position, but having a team to do parts of the work stream would be helpful. And you can go to Fiverr and for example, thumbnails or some other things. There are people who are experts at it for very little money that can churn out them really quickly and maybe better. But what's the best thing about the team is similar to the mentors is that they can polish some of the issues you have as you go faster than you could because you get blind to your own content, right? So having Alex behind the camera telling me is like, that was not that well said or that doesn't really work or hey, can you say it this way has helped me polish my content a little bit faster. I've done hundreds of days of consulting. I've done over 100 podcasts. So I have a lot of experience of long form content, but I don't have as much experience of this like mid form content that YouTube is. It's not short, it's not super long, it's somewhere in the middle usually. And, and I've had to learn a different way to approach it. And it's been helpful to have somebody to comment on it. Now, again, even if you're shooting yourself and you can't afford to hire someone to edit your videos, have some of your friends or people you think are your target audience to sit behind the camera as you're shooting them and giving you pointers. You probably have to don't pay, have to pay your friend to do that. Like they can probably help you out for free, but having a second, third, fifth, fourth, fifth pair of eyes and ears will be helpful. So having a team is one way how we were able to create better content faster. Fourth way how the channel grew was a partnership with my company for Sigmatic. It's a little bit of a church and state difference is like, this is like my channel and my thoughts. Um, and I'm trying to create it. It's not making me money, which is obviously both good and bad. Like I don't have to create content that I'll sell you a $500 course or whatever. Um, but at the same time, I'm losing money. But the one way how I've benefited and grown the channel faster is the partnership with Four Sigmatic, which is my company and technically also my employer. And that they, some of my content, maybe one in 10 or maybe two out of 10 of those videos that I create are helpful to them as well. For example, around mushroom education. So them including um, the content into our emails or our Google ads and taking clips of it has helped bring more traffic to the channel. And especially after hitting 10,000 subscribers, that really amplified it because at that point it was like de-risk from a social proof point of view. And we had found some shorts and content that they could leverage in their normal marketing efforts. And, and not all marketing efforts are sales efforts. There's a lot of educational efforts, but if you don't own a company, which is probably the case, you could still find a brand or brands. And instead of asking them to, hey, like, hey, will you sponsor my video? You go to them and say like, hey, what's like a content problem you have? And they're like, well, we always need content for our emails or videos. It's like, I can create you recipes or content. Uh, in exchange, can you put my YouTube channel into your emails? In the case of Four Sigmatic, there's like hundreds of thousands of emails that go out. and me being mentioned on those emails surely helps bring traffic to the channel. And what you could do is go find a couple of those brands. Maybe they'll pay you some, but you give them a heavily discounted rate or for free, but they help promote you. So you get distribution. And once that momentum builds, maybe later you can monetize the channel. That's not my purpose to monetize the channel, but probably after a while, you can actually like charge people for it. But in the beginning, it helps you grow the channel a lot faster. The fifth and final way how the channel grew faster was that we tried a lot of things. When I talked to the experts of YouTube, they said, just do a single purpose channel. So if you want to create a channel on finance, just talk about finance. If you want to create a channel about being a dad or parenting, just do that. If you want to create a channel about health and wellness and biohacking, just do that. If you want to do business, just do that. And that was not fun to me. It's probably the right advice, but it was not fun to me. Uh, instead, I created topics and videos about like so many things, probably too many things, to be honest. But it did help me try out a lot of stuff, particularly with the shorts, YouTube shorts and different stuff. And, and most of our views have come from really like two topics, maybe three. And a lot of the videos have done, not done so great, right? So in this process, I've, I've also learned to understand on where I add the most value to you and therefore also helps get more views and grow the channel and reach more people and, and help more people. And you can do the same thing. Now it's a little frustrating and you need to have a thick skin because some of your content will bomb, 
like mine has, you get maybe negative comments because it's not as good, but like being vulnerable and getting out there and creating content, even if it sucks or if it's not as good, will help you get A, better, but B, maybe find a topic that you do really well with. And I think that's why also like some people take three years to blow up on YouTube is that they're trying to find the, the topic they do well with. And then once they find that topic, it just explodes the channel. So if you can test stuff faster and earlier, probably the better. And we've tested a lot of things and that has helped us. Again, it's like the power law where most of our subscribers and most of our views have come from like few videos and few shorts. And those are within like a couple of different topics and the rest didn't suck. But we wouldn't have those top videos if we didn't do also the content that sucked, or at least that's how I believe. So those are the five things that I did to help grow the channel bigger. I hustled my ass off to get to the first few thousand to kind of de-risk the social proof of subscribing to the channel. I used mentors, both free and privately on people who'd help me figure out the main reasons, the thumbnail, the title, the topic. Then I had a team that helped me learn faster. I tried a lot of stuff and I had a partnership with Four Sigmatic. Those were the five things that helped me get there. Now I also learned a lot of things and things I would do differently if I would start from fresh today, which is normal. Um, despite doing well, it doesn't mean that you didn't learn stuff or you could have done even better. So here are three things I've learned about growing the channel from zero to 100,000 in four months. First of all, growing faster is not better. It might sound sexy and impressive and awesome. And there are people that have gone from zero to millions of subscribers quickly. But what you should know is that that's not necessarily a better outcome than growing slowly. Those people that follow you, like you, you don't know me, or most of the people watching these videos don't know me, and there's not a personal relationship with me. Therefore, you're probably like not as likely to watch more videos or, or maybe you leave angrier and more negative comments. I've surely had a lot of negative comments because like the audience is not vested in what I'm doing yet and they don't know who I am. They don't know if I'm a scam or the real deal and that's understandable. So if you grow slowly and your audience grows with you, you will have this like thousand true fans, core audience that loves every video and watches every video and comments positively to every video. So what I learned from this is like, there's a trade-off between speed and quality. You can have both over a long period of time. So I think over time, more and more people will be regulars on this channel. And some of the people who watch a video once will never come back and that's normal. So while it's great to grow to 100,000 so quickly, it's not necessarily any better. So if you're a content creator and you're struggling to get to 1,000 subs or 10,000 subs, or 100, whatever, it's okay. Just try to get like your audience and add enough value to those people that they, they will love it, come back and recommend it to their friends. So don't obsess over the fancy numbers. At the end of the day, the views or subs are vanity. It's the value and help you bring to the world is, is the call, right? That's my opinion. But that's a big thing I've learned is even though we've done way better than I thought, that doesn't mean that that's like a better outcome. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm trying to get better at this and add more value to more people. And, and yeah, that's the growth is just one part of it. Second thing I've learned is like, don't take anything personally. I don't think I could have been able to create this channel when I was in the twenties, definitely, maybe not even thirties, uh, early thirties, because like a lot of people only see you want your short, like a lot of the growth comes from YouTube shorts today like it or not. And in that world, they see only a part of the clip. Like I have a video about the pros and cons between the US and Europe. And of one clip that's done really well is a, like the negatives about America. Negatives often get more views, sadly. And the whole video has tons of positives on why I love America and why I live here and why my wife is American, and my kids are um, born here. And, but that doesn't get seen. They only see the clip about the negative and then they comment. So don't take that personally. They have probably a million things going in your, their lives and they're busy and they just happen to algorithm brings them this clip and they comment. And um, there's a lot of people who comment based on just the thumbnail or title and never watch the full video. Like they don't, like I explained it in the video in the first minute and they comment the opposite. It's like, why would you say that? It's like, it's in the first minute. So you clearly didn't watch it. And first I was like frustrated. It's like, hey, watch the video. It's like, it's in, 45 seconds if you watch it, but people don't. But 
I realized like you really shouldn't take that personally. They are busy. You just need to be better. So instead, if you get a negative comment or this and that, like brush it off, move on, but also like learn from it if there's like a nugget of truth to that comment. And last lesson I've heard is like focus is really powerful. Like I'm being blown away by how quickly the channel has grown. But one of the things that has made me reaffirm is my belief in focus. A lot of people who start a podcast, they also put it on YouTube and then Spotify. And then they also do Instagram reels and this and that. And I basically haven't done any social media content. This is not a podcast. It's not found on podcast platforms. I'm not really on TikTok. As you grow, like now, we're going to start posting TikToks to uh, shorts to TikToks and whatnot. Maybe you get more views. But in the beginning, I just did one thing and one thing only in YouTube and that paid off. And, um, and a lot of people come to me now as like, how did you grow it that fast? And big part of that is just focus. Like they're trying to do five things and they're failing at all those five things instead of if they would just do one thing for a while. So a big lesson for me of this experience is again, the power of focus and just doing one thing for a while. And then you can do the second thing for a while instead of trying to do five things at the same time. And what I've learned from this is like, I probably have tried too many topics. So like being a little more focused. So when people come to my channel, they know that I create content about A, B, and C is probably helpful. Also, none of my video intros were universal. So if you were new to, the, new to this channel, you didn't know anything about me. I just went straight to the topic. And I think having a short introduction of who I am is helpful for new viewers because some people like comment on why do you speak so funny? And it's like, well, English is my fourth language. So that's why I speak funny. I can't pronounce Colin properly. So um, my wife mentions it every day that I can pronounce certain words correctly. So having a little bit of an intro, I think is helpful in these videos. Having a more narrow focus is helpful. In general, I think listening to the audience of what they want to hear is also helpful. And I've had a lot of comments that I'm grateful for. And that's, I think, helped to me to plan like what's what's the next 10 videos I will plan to create. That's it. That's my story of going from zero to 100,000 subs in four months. How did I get there? What did I learn from it? What you could maybe take away from it and what I plan to change going forward. Hopefully this video was helpful. I can make a video when I hit another milestone or thing, or if I fail, I'll also create a video about my YouTube journey along the way. Not too often, but every now and then check in on how things are going and what I'm learning from the process. So if this is interesting to you, leave a comment if you want to see more. If not, you can also leave a comment and say, I don't need to see any more videos about your YouTube journey. I don't care. I will not be offended. Thank you for joining. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Many of you haven't, despite all the success. Um, and so subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.